you know, being a female, I know that things have happened. Um, I have been a person that somebody tried to hurt. If it wasn't for boxing, I don't know what happened. I don't know if I would have got out of that situation. I take teaching with my students, teaching my students very, very ser seriously. And I always talk about how you can use this stuff in the real world. I love boxing, you know, and it's something I just did you know, as working out, as fitness. And it kind of morphed into something different after that for me. And so I wanted to help more people. I knew that I can teach more than just boxing. For me, it was more, you know, about teaching people, not just boxing, but how you can use that, how you can build that confidence in your lives to become a person that's like, almost like self-defense. I mean, I don't call it self-defense because I feel like um, when I'm doing self-defense, I'm doing more than self-defense. I'm talking about self-care. I'm talking about setting boundaries. I'm talking, I'm talking about healthy behaviors, gender stereotypes. So for me, it's about violence prevention um, overall. We do teach introductory level self-defense skills, and we think they're very important for women to know. But we also teach intuition, assertiveness skills. We teach de-escalation skills, options for escape. So whatever situation I'm in, there's always something I can do, right? And that's not always fighting. I was attacked by an ex-boyfriend and I was able to quickly, even, even though he broke my thumb when he attacked me, I didn't think about that. Because of my training, I was able to get out of that situation very, very quickly before something happened. As women, we're more likely to be assaulted by somebody we know 85 to 90% of the time. And I know that's really hard sometimes to hear we think about the stranger jumping out at us behind the bush, which does happen, absolutely, but not as much as it happens as a dating partner or a neighbor or an intimate partner. Knowing self-defense and knowing what to do and having that confidence, just because you walk a certain way, you do People won't attack you. People won't come after you. This class has definitely given me the tools I think I need to um, protect myself. Um, we've learned many defensive um, moves that will protect like the vital areas like my head and neck and stuff like that. And being able to strike back at the opportune moment, learning how to keep the flow going in a fight, but also be able to protect yourself. My self-confidence was pretty low before I started, and I feel like boxing has made my confidence grow over these past few weeks. It's it's physical exercise, and also I can use it for like, you know, um, self-defense, and like that. If you get stuck in a domestic situ violent situation, you need to know how to protect yourself. It's very important, and, and my hope is everybody comes out with that, that knowledge in class. My cousin um, was a victim of domestic violence. The unfortunate incident, it's, it's actually in the news, you can look it up, um, happens on campus. And it is, it's hard to talk about because it was very traumatic. Just off campus tonight at the scene of what police are calling a domestic violence homicide. You know, it, it, it sticks with me, it sticks with my whole family. Um, and my goal is, can I help a student prevent that? I know that it's prevented something happening to me because I knew how to box. I knew martial arts. How can I translate that into my teaching to the students? I want them to learn more. Oh, this is a fun boxing class. Yes, but you can use this. You can use this so that they don't have to experience what my family has had to deal with and will have to live with the rest of our lives. Remember raves? 
We went down to Chicago for this rave at this old theater. I walk into that rave and someone handed me a pill of something that I don't know what it was. And then I lost four hours of time. I knew in my body that something happened to me. And I had this overwhelming conscious decision to stuff it. So fast forward 15 years, I start getting these little flashes of this theater of men, of lights. I was pinned to the theater seats by five men. There were four knives, one gun, and I was strangled. I was drugged. I couldn't fight. I couldn't do anything. They taped my mouth. I couldn't yell. I felt powerless completely. Most people with ill intent, most attackers, abusers, are looking for somebody who appears to be an easy target, right? So if we stand up for ourselves, if we yell, if we fight back, we're bursting their little myth of this complacent victim. So we can negotiate, we can use our assertiveness skills, we are projecting our voices, we have a confident stance. So I'm gonna stand up and show you what it looks like to back somebody all the way up. Back up, leave me alone. I said, leave me alone, go away. Hey, you in the red shirt, I need help now. So Isabel grabs me in a mist, you grab escape, right? Hey, you're grabbing me, I don't like it, let go. Good day, right? So okay. helping folks feel empowered because you can't give someone empowerment. They, that has to come from the inside, but maybe creating a pathway for them, a, a place where they can, they can explore that, what it feels like to be powerful. Be confident in what you're doing, being confident in yourself, being confident you can get out of a situation and being confident enough not to get in, like maybe it's a relationship. Be confident enough to walk away from an abusive relationship. That's really difficult for people to do, is to walk away from abusive relationships. If you're not taught those tools, you're not gonna have the confidence to do that. And like I said, I'm, pro I'm hoping I'm providing that confidence for students. Can we please stop saying, why doesn't she leave? And can we please start saying, why does he do that? Like, can we not victim blame anymore? And can we put it on the abuser? He's the one doing that. It is on him. Why is that so difficult? Why is it that we, we blame the victim or the survivor for the, the, the sexual violence? Oh, it's what they were wearing. It's what they were drinking. It's where they were. The park is safe. A dark park is safe. It's the perpetrator that's in there that's not safe. You know, the, uh, if you feel that you're superior and the superiority, that there's this weaker person that you need to dominate over, those kind of values, if somebody's taught that, creates violence towards women. It's everybody plays a role in ending violence. Uh, I, don't, I don't really think it's a man's issue, even though men are the perpetrators of violence, right? Male on male, male on female. It's a small percentage of those men. We have to look at the big picture. We have to look at what's happening at the societal level. We have to look at the institutional level. We have to look at the community, the interpersonal and the personal. And maybe if we talk self-defense and the mentality of it and the mentality of abuse in schools at a very young age that maybe this stuff wouldn't happen. I founded Girl Strength in 2008. And so it's in middle schools. We teach it as an after-school program mostly. We talk about healthy relationships. We talk about a lot of assertiveness and boundary setting. And then in 2013, the girl strength director at the time, Caroline Haycraft, and I co-founded the boy strength program. A lot of violence. Okay. 
All right, 30 more seconds. I'm going to ask someone from this group to maybe... You know, why aren't we teaching these skills to, to boys? But then I'm like, well, no, they need a different set of skills, right? If men are perpetrating the violence um, and our culture is providing, um, giving, sending messages where they feel like it's okay to hurt someone else's body, whether it's male on male or whether it's male on female or, you know, not uh, folks not in the binary, uh, what do we need to be teaching boys? And so that led to uh, a boys program. So I'm going to start. So I chose martial arts. Uh, martial arts keeps me physically... Organizations like Emerge Safe Now are really important. Um, we educate and promote healthy behaviors. We look at ending gendered violence, right? And that, that can take many forms. Um, we work with all populations all ages you know when i'm working with youth i think i they're the they're the future they're they are not frightened of change right it's already happening we're already looking at gender and pronouns what gives me hope is um knowing that i've made a difference but i'll also tell you when i look at the the youth and the young people that I've worked with over the years and I see how strong they are and I see how confident they are and and I know that they're if something were to happen they're going to be okay because they have that core but also because they 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 have they have the physical training as well as the mental training what gives me hope is the women who take the class and say I found my voice I stood up to my boss yesterday I ended an abusive relationship. I feel like I can set boundaries with my mother. That gives me hope when women walk away from our class with those skills. There's hope for me here. There's hope for me to teach and, and for students to learn. My hope is if I just help one person. I did something, you know, I did something. My name is Delia McQueen. I am a full-time physical education teacher at PCC Rock Creek. My name is Sarah K. Johnson. I am the director of the Women's Strength Program through the Portland Police Bureau. I'm Caroline Haycraft. I'm the executive director for Emerge Safe Now.